Hi there, I'm James Gilmer, your user services librarian, here to introduce the library's webinar on locating case studies. So to kind of get started, um, I'm going to cover uh, the following things here. These are the topics for today. So the first one is uh, just defining what a case study is and the purpose for it in the research process. The second one is obviously how to locate case studies through the library, which is probably what most of you are here for. That's going to be the part where I'm going to be showing you how to use some of the databases we have to find case studies specifically. And then once I show you that, I'm going to show you some tips on how to evaluate case studies because they're a little bit different than your traditional resource. And then I'm going to show you some resources you can use for writing your own case studies if you need to do that for an assignment of, or something for a class. And then just show you some links that we have on our website just for extra help if you think you'd need it. So by the end of this session, you will hopefully be able to do most, if not all of these things, uh, starting with, of course, what a case study is, which a case study is basically an in-depth examination of a topic by collecting and analyzing data. So it's uh, pretty pretty self-explanatory there. It's kind of like doing your own research, but it can take the form of an event or program, activity or individual. And if it's an individual, it means that they're the one that's conducting the study. And can, case studies are used for a variety of things, including exploring new concepts, generating new perspectives on a topic, further illustrating existing theories on a particular topic, and connecting a research topic to other similar concepts to establish or support a relationship between the two topics. So there's a bunch of different reasons case studies are used and there's so many things they can, you can do with them. And if you're curious, if you are in the criminal justice program here, in the field of law, case studies consist of examining a court's decision or opinion on a particular issue or case. So it, it can be, difficult to kind of get those terms mixed up. So a case study in a general sense is the in-depth examination of a topic. Uh, but then in the field of law, a case study is when you're looking at a court's decision on a particular issue. So hopefully that kind of distinguishes the two because it can get a little confusing. So, so now that you understand what a case study is or just a basic definition, I'm going to show you a couple ways you can locate case studies. First being in Dragon Quest, which I hope all of you are familiar with to some degree at this point. So there's a couple of different things you can do to find case studies in Dragon Quest. If you are if you are not familiar with Dragon Quest, it's our online catalog, which is on our homepage. Um, you, you might have seen it on our website. It's right smack dab in the middle where the dragon logo is in a search bar. So it's it's right in the middle. But if you're looking to find case studies in Dragon Quest, you can do this by visiting our advanced search page and then typing in your topic or field of interest into the search bar. And I'm going to show you how to do this in just a second. So once you get your topic typed in, you're going to type in case study into the second search bar and make sure that and is selected as the Boolean term on the left side. And then once you do that, you just click search and then use the filters that you would normally use in any type of Dragon Quest search to narrow down your results. And just as kind of a pointer here, the, the full text checkbox filter is going to help you find a, a lot more sources a lot faster. So I'm going to show you how to do this real quick here. So I'm going to switch over to the library tab that I have open here. So hopefully you've seen this before. This is our home page. And Dragon Quest is located right in the middle here. So I'm going to follow the steps that I just read off the slides here. So first I'm going to go to advanced search. And if you're on a laptop or even on your phone, you want, you're welcome to try this on your own or kind of follow along, but it's up to you if you want to just watch. That's also okay. So I'm going to just type in a general topic just to get us started. Um, let me see. I'll do... I'll do, a, some, I'll do a topic about healthcare workers. So this is my first search bar. 
And then in the second search bar, I'm going to type in case study. And then if you remember from the steps, you just want to have and selected in between. So that's already selected. And then hit search. And then from here, since we've got quite a few results here, you can use the filters like you normally would in Dragon Quest to narrow down your results and make it easier to find things. So I'm actually going to select full text to uh, show me sources that are available right away. Um, this is, I always say the full text box is going to be your best friend because it, it, it takes out everything that you can't get access right away. So I always recommend using that. If you are also in need of peer-reviewed journals or peer-reviewed case studies, you can also check the peer-reviewed checkbox. And that's going to show you everything that we have that is peer-reviewed. So they're considered scholarly sources, which is also important in the research process. But you can kind of see as I'm looking at my results here, a lot of the titles say um, something along the lines of a case study on blank or a case study from whatever location it's from. And so usually that's a pretty good indicator that it's a, it's a case study that you could use for an assignment or whatever you're looking for. I'm just kind of scrolling through here to show you what the results kind of look like. And then when you're trying to access any of these sources, there's always going to be a link right underneath the title. And the PDF full text links like these are going to be really easy to get to. You just click on the link and it takes you straight to the source. So pretty simple. And then there's some other links such as uh, full text via Ohio link EJC, which basically does the same thing as the PDF link. You just got to click uh, one more time. And then there's an example there. There's a couple other options. There's sometimes a full text finder link that'll end up usually finding it for you. And then if there's not any other links besides the um, interlibrary loan link, which is right here, that's just when we get it processed through another institution. So you just fill out the form and we usually can get back to you pretty quick on whether we can give that source to you or not. So that's just a brief overview on how to use Dragon Quest to find case studies. But there's several other options that you can use to get case studies from the library. Dragon Quest is not your only option. So I'm going to show you a couple of those. The first one being our EBSCO database list, which is one of our primary database providers and is located on the A to Z list on the library website. Um, so I'll show you where that is in just a, in just a minute. But these databases cover several different disciplines, and the good thing is that they all have the same search functions. So if you're really good at using Dragon Quest and you're really familiar with the functions, you're going to be able to use these really easily because they all look the same and have all of the same features. So you'll, you'll kind of see how it looks similar to, to Dragon Quest when I show you what it looks like. But to use the EBSCO database list to find them, you have to go to the advanced search page like in Dragon Quest, so very similar. But what you're going to do is you're going to select case studies under the publication type filter. Now the only issue with this is that not every database on this list contains case studies, so you may not have that option and so you may have to try a different database instead. So that's one way to locate case studies or what you can do is use the advanced search function and follow the steps that you would for locating case studies in Dragon Quest. So there's basically two ways you can do it. If you are pretty comfortable with following these steps for Dragon Quest, you can definitely apply those to using them in, in this database list as well. So I'm going to show you where to find the EBSCO database list. I'm going to go back to our home page here. Let me give it a second to load.
There we go. Okay, so to find the EBSCO database list, you just have to go to databases, kind of at the bottom of the screen. And so you're going to see our database list, which is all of our databases on one big list. So to find the ones that are under the EBSCO provider, just go down to vendors and click EBSCO. And I'm going to see if which one I, I'm just going to pick one. I'll do applied science and technology full text. You can kind of scan through these, these database titles and see which ones kind of fit your topic the best, whatever topic you're looking at. Um, criminal justice might be a good one if you're in the criminal justice program or taking criminal justice class. You can see as I'm kind of navigating this, it shows that this is the one I'm searching. Um, but I'm going to go back to the Applied Science and Technology full text. So what you can do is scroll down to Publication Type. And I don't see, looks like case study isn't on here. So let me see, document type. There it is. Okay, so it's going to be other, it's going to be under document type. You want to make sure you check that off. And then you can type in your search terms. And then it'll only show you case studies that are in that database. I'll just use the same topic as before. Okay, so no results found on that one which I guess kind of makes sense because we're searching a science database. Um, we'll try, try computer science. Okay, so we got a little bit on, we got a little bit on this topic. So this is an easy way to search for case studies because it automatically filters out anything that's not a case study when you select that case study option underneath the document type. So you can kind of see it's very similar. You can you still use the same filters as before to narrow down your results. And then you just click the links to access the sources below the title. So not too, not too much different, not too difficult. So hopefully that kind of gives you some more options in terms of what you can use to find case studies other than Dragon Quest, because sometimes it can get overwhelming. And we want to make sure you're not you don't feel overwhelmed, of course. Let me clear out of that real quick. So, like I said, to search for case studies on the EBSCO list, on the EBSCO databases, just use advanced search and then select case studies under doc. It's going to be document type, uh, not publication type. I think they changed the wording on that. So it's going to be document type. Or if you just want to use the advanced search function and follow the Dragon Quest steps, you can do that too. Now, the second database I'm going to show you how to use that also has case studies is called Nexus Uni. And it specializes in case studies and court cases, including Supreme Court decisions dating back to 1790. Now, I always recommend you use the advanced search function on this, but you can also use the browse function. And Nexus Uni is also located on our database list. So I'm going to go back to our list here and clear, all, clear out the filters go back to 194 that we have and it's going to be under under n and it's going to be located right here and actually before i get into that i will say there's one thing you can do if, if you're feeling kind of lost and you need to find some case study databases you can go to this list and then go to database type and there's a case studies option down here so that can also help with finding case studies um, so you can see all of our, our case studies databases, including the one I'm going to show you uh, right now. So I'm going to click here. And we'll give it a second to load up. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do an advanced search. So you can obviously type into the search box here and start getting results, but I'm going to go to advanced search right here. And I'm going to start entering my search terms. So it's very similar. Um, you have more than one search search bar and you can start typing in multiple 
search phrases. So I'm going to stick with the same same topic I was using earlier. And actually, I'll use a quick case study underneath. And then I'm not going to use the third one. Let me actually, before I do a search, let me go to the next slide here. Okay, so there's no written instructions on Nexus Uni. I was just checking to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so I have these typed in here. And I'm going to hit search. So you're going to have to read through some of these topics and some of these articles and then make sure that these are actually case studies. Um, there is a filter on the left side here labeled cases, um, but these are going to be more for um, actual court cases. So if you're looking for something like that, Nexus Uni is going to be helpful. Uh, but if you're looking for traditional case studies that don't have any, uh, that aren't involved with court decisions, you will probably have to kind of go through these results and kind of make sure that it is a case study. And usually that'll be indicated by the, the topic or the, the title. It'll say, um, you know, a case study on healthcare workers or something along the lines like that. But if you want to narrow your results down in Nexus Uni, um, you, you can just follow kind of the same rules you would for Dragon Quest. A lot of the filters are the same, where you can eliminate them by source type or publication or time period, all that same stuff. So pretty simple to navigate. And so if you want to view any of these sources, what you can do is just click on the topic, or not the topic, the title. And sometimes it'll only give you like a, a preview at first, and then there's usually a download option. So it looks like this is the this is the entire source right here, but it looks like there's some graphs and charts involved, and they're not included unless you download the actual tables right here. But other than that, the whole the whole source is here. So you can pretty much do this for all of the sources in here. Um, there may be one or two possibly that don't actually show up in full text, but most of them should. So pretty simple. And if you do want to cite this at all, if you're if you're needing citation information, you can click on the there should be a cite option somewhere might just be under export citation right here oh perfect okay so then once you uh, whatever AP whatever formatting style you need which uh, most of you is probably APA and then it'll make the citation for you and then you can just copy and paste it into your document you obviously want to make sure that it is formatted correctly but this will help you get help get you started So I'm going to backtrack a little bit here. I'm going to show you briefly on Nexus Uni how to use the browse function. So this is going to be helpful for finding case studies as well. You can use this guided search feature and just kind of follow the prompts. So you're going to select cases first. And this is going to be for um, cases like federal and state like court cases. So you might find this useful as well. Uh, so I'm going to do, do state cases, and then I'll enter, enter Ohio. And then let's try healthcare again. And then I can choose a date range, do past five years, and search. And so now it gives me a list of, of case, of like court cases from the past five years uh, with regards to healthcare. So that's how the, the, the browse function works as well.
So I figured I'll show these show these rule these uh, instructions again real quick. Uh, but that's how to briefly use Nexus Uni to find case studies. So depending on what you're looking for, you might find one database better over the other, and it, it really just depends on what works best for you. But I have a couple other options that you can use. Um, the third one I have here is the EBSCO ebook collection, which is a collection of ebooks, and they're all full text and they're all scholarly reference and professional ebooks. So they're going to be located on our A to Z list again. And basically, you follow the same rules. You type in your search terms and then and case study into the search bar so that it distinguishes between regular ebooks and case studies. And then you just view your search results and use the filters to narrow them down. And you just want to make sure the title indicates um, a case study in a specific field that you're looking for. So I'm going to go back to our database list here. And then I'm going to go back down to the EBSCO provider here and find the EBSCO ebook collection, which should be under here. So this is very similar to using the EBSCO databases because they're basically the same platform. I'm going to go to advanced search, type in your topic, and then make sure uh, and is selected and type in case study. Um, or if you don't want to do that, you can also do it all in one line. Do it like that. And so what you're going to have to do is when you're reading through these results, you're going to have to look at the table of contents to see what case, what case studies are actually in the book. Um, but some of these indicate case studies in the title. So like this one, for example, so as a case study of Mao India. And then there's some here as well about healthcare management. So you kind of have to do some reading and looking at the title, but, but that's how you can use uh, the ebook collection to find case studies as well. Now, the last one that I want to show you that's going to help you locate case studies is the O'Reilly Safari Learning Platform. And it's basically a curated library of technical books, tutorials, and case studies pertaining to different topics like web development, mobile applications, and entrepreneurship. And it includes titles from public publishers like Pearson and O'Reilly Media. And it's not part of our EBSCO database collection. So there may, they might be a little bit tougher to find when you're searching Dragon Quest. So that's why it's a good idea to search this one individually. So when you want to access this database, you're going to have to select the not listed click here uh, option when it pops up on your screen and then enter your Tiffin University email address. So I'm going to go back to our list here. Go down to O and it's the first one listed. And so we're going to go down to the select your institution and uh, go to not listed and then just type in your university email address and then it should say uh, something some kind of welcome message once it logs you in so there we go I'm gonna click click here and so now I'm able to start searching and looking at sources once once this loads up So there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, this one's a little tougher to use because of the way that they kind of categorize some of the things here. Because um, it's not just case studies on this database, there's other things too. So if you want just case studies, you're going to want to scroll down to the bottom where it says case studies. I'm going to click see more. And so what it lets you do is it lets you kind of browse through all of the ones that are available. 
and it gives you kind of the author's name, the title, and what topic kind of falls under. So I'm going to go to what a career development. And so we've got a couple case studies on career development. And then so let me go back to all topics. You can you can always backtrack by clicking on the, the all topics icon here and it'll take you back to where you started. Um, so there's a security section. So you can take a look at any of the security case studies. So it just depends on the topic you're looking for. Just remember they're categorized by topic. You can even search as well. So you can type in any kind of keyword and see if there's anything in there. So that's how that works. So if there's one you want to check out, um, I'm going to click on just a random one here. Um, we'll do the three ways to learn Python. So uh, what this is, this is actually uh, looks like it's a video and like and then a book combined. So this may not be the video might be a case study, but the rest uh, seem more like a book. So actually, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to try a different one. Oh, no wonder it's not showing case studies because it's under all topics. Let me, let me go back here. Let me backtrack. Go down to case studies. See more. Okay, so it still has under all topics. All right, so let me, let me see where we can get to just the case studies. I'm trying to see. Usually there's a way to get to just the case studies, but maybe it's possible it moved. All right, so not that. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to case studies again. I'm going to click on I'm going to click on the one on pitch the one about Pinterest. That seems interesting. So it looks like uh, this case study is a video. It's like a documentary. It's about 58 minutes long, and it has the publication information right here. Looks like it just came out, too. And there's a little transcript, just description, on the case study. And if you want to watch it, you just hit start. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's case study, How Pinterest Built a Stream Processing Platform with Apache so then it automatically starts playing and you can watch it. You can also watch it with captions, take notes, whatever you want to do. Um, I believe there's a transcript of the whole script, I believe, right here. So you could you could just read the whole thing if you wanted. Um, it's up to you, however, however you want to handle this. But so that's how the case studies work on on this platform. So I'm going to backtrack here just a little bit. I'm going to go back down here to case studies. I'm trying to see where you can, if you're able to, I'm looking to see if we're able to just view case studies other than the ones that are on this like main list down here. see what comes up when I type this in here. See, sometimes even even someone like me has to do a little bit of trial and error to find what they're looking for. No, that's not it. So you might, I'm guessing maybe it might be under videos, because I, I know in previous experiences, all of the case studies on this database are videos. So I would maybe go to the videos if you're going to be searching for 
for anything specific. And you and it'll show you if it's a case study, it'll tell you it's, it'll be right there. Um, so this allows you to now browse through all of the case studies, which are it looks like they got a 1,134. So you just want to make sure if you're going to videos if you're well, if you want to browse through all of the the case studies on this platform. So I'll just show you that again real quick. So um, I just typed in, let's see, how did I do that? I gotta remember how I did that now. So I'll do my, do my search. And then videos. Now some of these are videos, but some of these are case studies. So you just wanna make sure you're, check, you're checking the ones or if you're going to use any of these, you make sure that they're a case study first. So it looks like there's another one there. So hopefully that makes sense and, it, and it's not too difficult to kind of see how that works. So Nexus Uni, or not Nexus Uni, O'Reilly Safari's platform is another option as well. So I highly recommend you use these because if you use just one, you're not really looking at all of your options. So I have a couple things that will help with evaluating case studies. Um, so if you have an assignment where you need to find a case study and do an analysis, here's some questions you can ask yourself that might help you with identifying any potential bias in the case study. And bias is very common. And you can help identify it by asking yourself questions like, how was the study funded? Was it sponsored by an organization? That can usually cause a conflict of interest. And sometimes the results can be skewed. You can also look at the researchers or the author's credentials and if they're an expert in the field. So if they're not, then you might want to take their claims with a grain of salt. You can also look at the study itself and look at if it includes inter alternative points of view in their discussion. If it only really talks about one side of a topic, that can be a red flag because it doesn't include alternative points of view and discuss them appropriately. And then lastly, if the study has a thorough literature review, that's usually a good sign because that means that the researcher did their research and, sh and show is showing that through their literature review. So I also have some tips that can help you with reading and evaluating a case study again. So you want to start by reading the case or if it's a video, watching it. And uh, it's a good idea to read it more than once because you might learn new information the second time very much like watching a movie, especially a, a longer film or something, um, especially like Marvel movies for sure. If there's any Marvel fans out there, you might learn new things the second time when you, you read it a second time. So, so much like a movie, you watch it a second time, you catch stuff you didn't catch the first time. Same thing goes with reading. It's also a good idea to take notes while you read, just writing down the case's main ideas, main pieces of information, that kind of thing. You can also look in specific parts of the text to locate primary information. This is also really helpful for annotated bibliographies. Just checking the abstract, summaries, any prefaces, paragraph headings, results sections, anything where there's kind of pieces of data, that's also a good place to check for main ideas. So that way you're not wasting time reading the whole thing if you can avoid it or if you press for time or just need the main ideas. If you're struggling to find the main ideas, try to find the problem that led to the study, and there can also be more than one, and that can help you find kind of the main topic, because usually a case study aims to find the answer to a problem or solve a problem. You can also kind of rank the issues if there's more than one issue from least important to most important and see if there's a relationship between the problems or topics. And the last tip is, it's always a good idea to research the business or affiliated parties' backgrounds of the case study for added context, because then you'll be able to get a fuller understanding of the study and why it was done. So there's a couple things I can, I'm going to show you briefly just to help you with writing case studies, or just they're just writing sources in general if you think you would benefit from these. If you've, if you've used these already, that's great. Um, if not, it might not be a bad idea to start using them. But we have um, Academic Writer, which is a website with tutorials on academic writing and citation. 
and it's, it caters specifically to APA format and case studies. It's also located on our A to Z database list. So the one that I've been kind of using this whole time, it's located on that list. There's also Google Docs and Microsoft Word for writing. And then there's also a lot of uh, reference management sources that you can use. Academic Writer is one of them, but there's others including AZBIB and RefWorks. You can also use those to kind of organize all your sources if you need to find like more than maybe like a couple because you'll get overwhelmed if you don't store them somewhere and keep them together. So I recommend you use one of those or um, Noodle Tools is a common one, so you can use that as well. You can also use manual citations from a database. You just have to remember that you're where you keep where you're keeping them so you don't uh, lose them, of course. So kind of to wrap things up here, I have some additional resources that may help with all of the things that I covered today. One being our research guides. We have a guide on how to locate case studies and a guide on how to locate and evaluate sources. And those are located on our website. And I'll show you just briefly where those are. guess it's being a little slow today too. So, all right, so the research guides are gonna be under the help tab. You're gonna to go to research guides and they're, they're all categorized by different disciplines. So uh, it's gonna be located under criminal justice. So you're gonna find case studies right here. And this covers a lot of the content that I covered in today's session. It just has it all written down for you. So you can check this out at your leisure. We also have one on source evaluation which should be under probably under a couple different categories. I'm going to go down to using Pfeiffer Library and it should be under here. Yep, it's right there. So this also has some specifics on how to evaluate sources just in general to make sure that they're accurate and relevant. And then we also have a lot of database tutorials. So if you're kind of feeling lost on any of the databases that I covered in today's session, we have written tutorials that can help you out with that. And we, like I said, we've got ones on Dragon Quest. We have one on EBSCO databases. We have one on Nexus Uni. We have one on the O'Reilly Safari Learning Platform. And then we also have ones on Grammarly and Noodle Tools, which can help, can help you with writing and citation. And those are all located on the same in the same place under the Help tab and go to Tutorials. And it has the list of all of our tutorials. So actually the Nexus Uni one is right here. And it, like I said, it has all of the content I covered today. Uh, sometimes, actually this might be a little bit more in depth than what I covered, but it has videos and instructions on how to use different features. So you can always have this open if you are trying to search for something and you feel kind of lost or you don't know what to do. So we always encourage you to use these because you can access them off campus um, anytime. They're not, you know, they're free to use and we, we want you to use them because then they help you gain more knowledge and allow you to find the sources that you need. So hopefully these sources will help you as you're looking for case studies and doing more research. So to kind of recap everything real quick, I have a couple questions. So the first one is, what are some of Pfeiffer Library's databases that you can use? To locate case studies. Now hopefully you remember some of them. So we've got the EBSCOhost databases. There's also Dragon Quest if you remember that. Nexus Uni and then the O'Reilly Safari Learning Platform. While reading a case study, what areas of text should you look at to find the most essential information to avoid reading the whole document? Now, this, there's a bunch of different answers for this, but there's abstract, paragraph headings, intros, conclusions, and results. How to identify case uh, bias in a case study? You can look for sponsors of the study and their affiliations. 
You can review the author's credentials and how the study was funded. You can check the study if it includes alternative points of view and if the study has a thorough literature review. And some tips and strategies for reading and analyzing a case study. You can take notes while you read, read the case more than once. And then you can also identify the main problems presented in the case study and mark those down. So that was just kind of a quick review to kind of make sure I'm hitting all the main points again so you don't forget. Hello again, James Gilmer, User Services Librarian, here at the end of the webinar just to give you some resources for additional help should you have questions as you work on your research and other assignments. You can always email the library directly at library at tiffin.edu. And Luann or I will typically get back to you that day during the nine to five Monday through Friday workday or on our next business day for questions that fall outside of those hours. You can also contact me directly if you prefer at gilmerjm at tiffin.edu. I monitor both of those inboxes and get to questions as quickly as I can. For more generalized help, check out our other webinars, research guides, and tutorials that are linked in the description below and on the library's homepage, library.tiffin.edu. Thanks again for watching and good luck with your research.